Good morning. Today is Wednesday, June 14, 2023. I'd like to share with you this morning part of a lecture I had the privilege to hear in person from Rabbi Norman Lamb. I shared one of his lectures uh, last week. This is on a different subject. I had the privilege to hear this from him in 1996. And it is a subject that today is more relevant than ever when so many of us cannot even agree on what is true. We're in the era of fake news, of misinformation, of repeating lies frequently at great volume as a way of establishing credibility. And this week's Torah portion really holds the key from a Torah point of view for us to be able to evaluate truth. Let's start with a question. Our Torah portion, the Parsha of Shlach, begins where God says to Moshe, send a group of spies into the land of Israel. Moshe gathers this group. He gives them their mission. He tells them what to look for bring back a report, and they went, they saw, they returned, and they reported. And according to most commentators, and certainly according to the simple reading of the text, they reported accurately. What they said, what they said was actually true. They told the truth. So what did they do wrong? How did it cause such hysteria among the Jewish people, arousing God's anger, as we discussed before, leading to to the decree that they would have to wander in the desert for a total of 40 years before entering the land of Israel? Let's start with the passage in the Talmud. The Talmud has a fascinating passage where it analyzes the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, their shape and their placement within the order of the alphabet. The the Talmud analyzes the letter Shin. Shin, the letter Shin, stands for Sheker, which means falsehood. Taf is the last letter of the word Emet, Aleph, Mem, Tuf. So the Talmud asks, My time a sheker makar vimile, and emes marachme mile. Why is it that the letters of the word sheker are bunched together in the placement of the alphabet, kuf, re, shin? They're right next to each other. The three letters are adjacent to each other. They're all confined to one little section of the alphabet. And MS is spread out. MS, Aleph is the first letter. Mem is the middle letter. Tuf is the last letter. The the word is comprised of three letters that, that span the entire alphabet. Whereas Sheker is comprised of three letters that are all bunched together in one position in the alphabet. So the Talmud says, because shikra shchiach, kushta lo shchiach. It is unfortunately more common to hear things that are false, and therefore it's grouped together, they're close together. You encounter one after the other, one falsehood after the other, after the other. Just listen to the news. MS. You have to go a distance before you hear something else that's MS. And another distance before you hear something else that's MS. It's not grouped together. It's scattered. And the Talmud asks the second question. My time a shikra achara karekoi. Why is it that the letters of sheker all stand on one leg? So I've I've showed this diagram to some of you before. This is just the letters. The letters of the words MS and Sheker. So if you look at Sheker, Shun, Shin, Kuf, Resh, you notice that the bottom of those three letters, they all end at a point, 
at the bottom. As opposed to MS, the three letters of MS all have a flat base. They're solid. It looks like the letters of Sheker could just fall over, metaphorically speaking. But MS, it has a solid base. It's, it sits solidly on the line. Talmud asks, why is that? The Talmud says... Kushta kai, shikra lokai. Truth stands like a building built of bricks, solid. Truth stands. Shikra lokai, falsehood does not stand. In other words, the letters that spell the words MS and Sheker, whether they, the letters are close together in the alphabet or far away in the alphabet, whether the base of the letters is wide, solid base, or a narrow, precarious base, that gives us an indication into the nature of falsehood and truth. And Rabbi Lamb understands this to mean that Sheker, the letters are all together, bunched together, is information that's confined to one space. Information that has a narrow focus, looking at one spot. And therefore, it's wobbly because it lacks perspective. It lacks context. MS is information in context with reference to its surroundings. It is spread out so all of the letters surround it and it has a firm basis. You can only tell what is MS by looking at the entire picture, the entire alphabet. And that is why it is secure. That's why it stands. So the first requirement for MS the most intuitive, the most obvious, is that it must be in accord with reality. But that is not enough to be considered MS, to be considered truthful. Because real information, information that accords with reality, can also be sheker in one of three ways. And all three of these ways the fail the test in the report of the Miraglim. When the Miraglim, when the spies report back their findings, they fail the test of MS in all three of these ways. Number one, in order to be MS, in order to be truthful, what you say must be said to the right person. Even if it accords with reality, but if you say something to the wrong person, that is sheker. You're causing harm. Hashem told Moshe to send the spies. And Moshe told the spies exactly what he wanted them to see. Go to the south and go to the north and see the people there. Are they strong? Are they weak? What does the land look like? Is it good? Is it bad? The cities... Are they fortified? Are they not fortified? Is the ground fertile? He had a list of questions. And why are they going? I mean, Hashem already said, I'm giving you the land. That's the first Pasik. Shlach l'cha anashim v'yasu eretz kanan send men to spy out the land, Asher Ani no Sein Livnei Yisrael, which I am giving to the Jewish people, meaning the, the, the giving to the Jewish people is not under discussion. So you want to find out which way to go, have an idea of what to expect, okay, but the giving of it, the receiving of it, is not in doubt. So Moshe asks for a report. And we have in detail what the report is supposed to say. Moshe says exactly what he wants to know. But their mission was to go, look for what Moshe told them to look for, and bring a report back to Moshe. 
to answer the questions that he asked. Now, if you're one of the spies and you return with a question, okay, Moshe, I'm telling you what I said, what I saw, but I have this question in my mind, how are we going to be able to do it? If you are one of the spies and you have a question when you come back, ask Moshe. Moshe is the one that sent you. Moshe is the one to whom you are supposed to report. And Moshe will answer you exactly what God said to Moshe. Don't worry. Hashem has promised that we will be successful. So you don't have to worry about that. But that's not what the spies did. The spies came back and they gave the report to Moshe and to Aaron and to the entire Jewish people. They told everybody at once. Their report is a statement that is intended to cause hysteria because... They did not give the report to the one who asked for it and the one who could certainly answer any question they had about it. They gave it to the entire people who were not equipped to give the answer their report called for. And in this way, they caused hysteria. In this way, their report was not MS. It was Sheker. It was false. Number two. In order to be MS, what you say must be told in a way that a listener will be able to respond effectively to what you are saying to them. Not in a way that the information is likely to be misunderstood or misused. For example, if you yell fire in a dark, crowded theater, you will cause panic. Many people will be hurt and trampled trying to get out. Now, if what you said was false, meaning there was no fire, then you committed a criminal act. But even if it's true that there was a fire, your words are still sheker in the sense that they are immoral, irresponsible, because you will cause panic. MS would be to find a way to calmly and safely lead people to safety, to exit safely. To yell fire is sheker, and that is what the Maraglim did. They gave information to people that did not have the ability, they were not equipped to be able to handle that information. And the response was predictable. The Torah tells us, Batisa kol ha'eda, vayidnu es kolam, vayivku ha'am balayla ha'hu. The entire Jewish people became hysterical, and they started crying all night long, and then, predictably, vayilonu al Moshe val Aaron, and then they started complaining to Moshe and Aaron, "Why did you bring us to the desert? We're just going to die here." It caused hysteria because it was said in a way that people could not use it properly. They could not respond safely, and therefore it was Sheker and not Emes. And number three, perhaps most important, in order to be Emes, what you say has to stick to facts, not interpretation. Now, they started with facts. The beginning of their report was facts. They said, We went to the land that you sent us to. It is certainly, indeed, a land flowing with milk and honey, and here are its fruits. Okay, those are facts. But then they continue with opinions. Fs ki az ha'am hayoshev ba'aretz, but the people are too strong for us, and we will not be able to conquer it. That's a, that's not a fact. That is an editorial opinion.
And that's what causes the problem. Because they were making a deduction, an assumption. And as it happens, it was wrong. Their assumption was based on the fact that the cities were fortified. So they came back and said, the people are too strong, we're not going to be able to go in. In fact, they made the wrong assumption, which is always possible when you make an assumption. Moshe had asked if the cities were fortified, but Moshe meant it differently. Listen to what Rashi says. Rashi says, Simon Musalahem. Moshe meant for them to understand in asking them to see whether the cities were fortified or not fortified. If they live in open cities that do not have defensive walls around them, then they are very strong cities. Shesomchim al gurasam, because they rely on their strength and might and army and power. Avul ba'arim betsurosheim, the im ba'arim betsurosheim. But if their cities are well fortified, strongly fortified, then yoshvin chaloshim heim. That means the people who live inside a week, and they can't defend, depend upon themselves to defend themselves. They have to rely on these walls. The city. The cities they saw were well fortified, but they made the wrong assumption. Had they just stuck to the facts, as Moshe asked, Moshe could have explained, oh, great, that means the cities are weak. But they added their own assumption, which happens to have been incorrect. That's Sheker. That's not Emes. And this is such an important and practical lesson for all of us. These situations arise all the time where we must be careful not just to say what is a fact, and that itself today is quite an achievement, but also to avoid sheker. It's so important watching news not to confuse opinion with fact, to put things that we learn about into context, to check the facts that are asserted with reality, with evidence. These lessons have never been more crucial for our culture and our society. Rav Nachman of Bratzlov wrote, Vahamaskil Vahamavin, one who really understands what life is about, that person should pray all of their days. Sheyizka that they should merit. Shepam achas that one time in their entire life. Ledaber dibur echad shel emes lifnei Hashem karoi that at least one time in their life they say one word that is absolutely, purely, and exclusively emes, truth before God. And my friends, we've got a long way to go. I wish you all a great day, and I look forward to seeing you all in person very, very soon.